Now that's significant. The Market Research Podcast. Hi everyone. Thanks for listening to this episode of Now That's Significant, a market research podcast. I'm your host, Michael Howard, Head of Marketing at InfoTools. Today, we're joined by Fabronio Riocco, who is Global Strategic Insights Director Consultant, having worked for a number of notable companies and brands such as Cadbury, Diageo, Heineken, McDonald's, Mars, and Heinz. She's incredibly passionate about empathetic leadership of high-performing teams and currently also a mentor for both women in research and the Durham University Leadership Academy. Thanks for joining us on the show, Fabronia. Oh, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much for inviting me. It's my very first podcast. Right, you're, you're welcome. Um, so uh, the way that I normally start uh, these podcasts is... Um, asking the um, the guests what the most significant uh, thing is that they wanted to talk about today. So I'll leave that with you. Yeah, I think uh, we are in very challenging times. And I think it's a time where market research and insights can have a significant impact. So I think rather than seeing it as a difficult time for our disciplines, it really is a time for opportunity. No, the definitely is true and we've had a lot of different um events i guess you could say over the last three years um which has all been contributing to that haven't we we have and i think if we think about it society has changed a lot of behaviors the way we shop the way we socialize the way we work or since the pandemic and also now post pandemic we're going through all of the economic crises and the challenges that that brings. So this creates a lot of different ways of doing things. And for market research and insiders, we really need to get beneath the skin of that and understand what value can we bring to consumers' lives? You know, how can we tap into those behaviours and offer products and solutions that really help them make a difference? No, for sure. No, you you mentioned just then market researchers and insiders. Do you have a, is there a delineation between the two for you? Yeah, I have a little bit of a thing about it because I see them quite differently and the two terms get used interchangeably, but market research for me is the discipline that uses a vast array of fantastic tools to gather data, collect information. And yes, it does often lead to insights, But an insight specialist is someone who will harness all of that data, plus other layers of data that exist within an organization to mine the real points, the real insights that uncover the growth that really tie in with the strategic plan of the marketeers to drive the commercial business. The reason I split them out is that only by splitting out and understanding what each of those does can we really harness the power of that partnership? And that's what it's really about, partnership between the two, because then we create a real you know, force in terms of how to gather data, how to mine it, and how to get to those really golden nuggets. No, sure. And do you think that in terms of industry specialization, um, they're both um reliant on on that so you dedicate yourself to say um, a market research career in um, confectionery um, or insights in confectionery do they are they mutually exclusive or should you um, double down on one well I think it depends on your particular preferences but most of us or the people that I know in the insights field we, we've often had a market research background as well so we come from agency we've Uh, managed accounts, we've um, worked with an array of different techniques and tools. So we know all of that, but we also have this very strategic hat on where we're working with uh, senior marketing stakeholders. So for us, it's not just about capturing the story and relaying the story, it's what are we going to do next commercially. Um, I I wouldn't say that one is better than the other. They're both very powerful uh, areas in themselves, but the power really comes when the synergies and when we pull it all together. And that's why I think it's important to keep thinking of them separately, because if we just jumble them up all into one, we lose those nuances. And it's the nuances that really deliver, uh, that uncover those hidden truths, deliver the growth. No, that's right. 
So if, if we think about the challenging times that we have been going through and dealing with, it kind of feels like we're just moving from one turbulent time to the next. Um, I guess it's a rather philosophical, uh, philosophical question to begin with, but has life actually become more turbulent or is it just a story we're telling ourselves? I think globally we've seen a number of different things happen. We've seen, uh, you know, um, political landscapes that have been uneasy. We've seen the Black Lives Matter. We've seen the whole pandemic and the lockdowns around the world. And some countries fared worse than others. And we had a pretty rough time of it here in the UK. So I think it's been pretty traumatic. And I, th I think we can't really deny that it's a big T trauma. You know, it's a generational trauma. And it will have affected the different cohorts in our society in different ways. When I think of young people that have had their whole scholastic careers and their university time blighted by the fact that everything moved so quickly online that they missed out on all the social aspects that perhaps you and I remembered being a very important part of university. Now with the fallout, we've got the whole economic piece and with the energy crisis and the war in Ukraine, it's just exacerbated everything and the inflation on food. So people are having a really rough time. And I, know, I, I can't speak for New Zealand, but in the UK, um, individuals are really struggling and there's a, a, a reliance on food banks and communities to really help and support one another. So we haven't known this type of hardship for many, many years. Um, so therefore, there's a real need to understand that, be empath empathetic to it, sympathetic to it, and understand that people's lives are in real turmoil right now. Yeah, um, we're definitely not, uh, we haven't escaped um, the, um, yeah, the, the turbulence, um, I guess, over the last few years. And um, we've had, um, constant even some uh, weather uh, issues as well like major flooding in Auckland which mm -hmm. is um, once in a century and even that feels like we're having one in a hundred year events um, every um, every few months or so um, so mm -hmm. that's just adding on to um, mm -hmm. the I guess the pressures that we're all facing on top of what you've mentioned. And um, we've also had changes of leadership I mean I, I know you've had a change of leadership Mm. New Zealand, but we've had a number of leaderships one after another in the UK. So that also adds to the instability, the uncertainty. I think at the moment, the thing that's really driving a, a lot of uncertainty is the inflationary piece. We've seen um, inflation on food goods go up to over 16%. That's high. We haven't had that since well before the 2000s. So yeah, for people that's a real struggle with the cost of their mortgage, their weekly food shop. It's just difficult. That's right. And I guess in the Northern Hemisphere, you're also dealing with weather um, as well at the moment. So high energy prices as well. Um, so yeah, they're saying that luckily we've had uh, quite a mild winter, so that's not been too bad. And the support packages from the government have, have also helped. But this is where market research and insight can make a real difference because by understanding all of these economic, societal, political variables and pulling it all together, we can really create a story and we can really then understand what, where are the areas where we can make a difference with our brands and services. And it's not just about pricing. There's been quite a lot of discussion in the last few weeks about price uh, elasticity work and that we shouldn't just think that value means low prices. And this is important. And again, um, something that in my role, I've done a lot of over the years, price elasticity work with the marketeers to really balance the pricing strategies within the portfolios. Mm. Um, so, so thinking about that, then um, the different types of market research methodologies, et cetera, like, what's, um, like how can they play a role together individually um, in these times? I think we need to make better choices. I mean, there's obviously uh, comparable tools across different agency sectors, but if we talk about things like um, pre-testing, concept testing, and so on, we need to really make sure that the work we're putting into these tests is really roadworthy and that we've done the upfront work in the pipeline before that. 
So not only choosing the most appropriate methodologies, but also being cost effective by knowing when you need research and when you don't. So I think um, it's great to have a wide spectrum of uh, tools that offer different KPIs. So really knowing which are the KPIs that are going to impact your business and making the right choice on that basis. Mm. How do you feel market research um, has changed and, and is adapting to help us navigate through the world today? I think the going online has definitely been advantageous in many ways. And we're seeing a lot more coming up now through the AI developments and so on. And that's all well and good. But I think um, areas where it's probably um, a little bit of a disadvantage is that we're losing some of that human connection. And there are times when you do need a qualitative in-person approach or you need an ethnographic where you actually physically go in home and don't just sit and watch via a camera. Um, so that kind of co-regulation piece, if you like, where we get close to the to the, the subjects and we get really into their way of life and, and, and see and support, I think sometimes that's needed and there's maybe a little bit of a loss of that at the moment. Mm. I mean, you, you would have had some market research professionals which have, have only known a post-COVID um, world um, starting their careers early. What are they missing out on by not having those human elements, the ethnographs, et cetera? Oh, they're missing out on fantastic experiences. I can tell you a story when I took uh, the CEO of a frozen food brand into home of consumers to look at their freezers and talk about, um, you know, the products and what they were stocking and, you know, what they were buying and why. I couldn't get him out of there. He was so into the conversation. And that's just the beauty of it, because senior marketeers are not always so close to their uh, audience you know they live very different lives and many uh, marketers live quite privileged lives so going into a household that relies on frozen food uh, understanding those behaviors and patterns and needs you know is, it could be a world apart but you know it's very exciting to actually see that and see the products and see the stocking and see um, the joy that some of those products bring the families and I think um, it's quite an inspiring part of our job when we see that and um, it's a privilege to go into consumers homes i say consumer i know today we don't use that term a lot but it, but sometimes i just think it still fits because they're still you know eating and uh drinking the products and so on that's right um so if we think about the different kinds of turbulence say COVID, global inflation, um, the various wars going on around the world. Are there any particular tools that we have access to that are better suited to help us through each type of turbulence? Uh, you can probably answer that question better than I can, Michael, being on the uh, agency side. Um, I think the online tools offer the ability to cut across geographies, but they always have. So I wouldn't say that they're specific to those issues. Um, I do think um, you still need a degree of empathy. So sometimes the human touch is still needed. So for example, being able to really understand the difficulties in some of those territories, clo you know, closer to the uh, turbulent geographies. Um, you can glean more in a conversation than you can in an online questionnaire. So I think, again, it's knowing what, you know, when do you apply a certain approach and when do you really have to put tools down and just be human? That's right. Yeah, and you can always pick up far more um, from someone's body language, et cetera, as well, can't you? Um, reading Absolutely. through that than just uh, uh, what's written in a, a small um, open-ended box necessarily. I so think as well, I think as well with cameras and mobile technology, it's so easy to just take a picture and send, and that can say, you know, a picture can speak a thousand words. Mm. Very true. But, yeah, I guess ultimately it's having a toolbox and um, taking a, a multi-approach is, is always best when we can, um, but depending on the turbulence we're going through, it's not always available to us. But I do think um, when we're in these difficult economic times, we have to work harder, we have to work better. There's a, mm. 
there's a general knee-jerk reaction that you know it's batten down the hatches, cut the budgets, cut the teams, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But actually, the the opposite is often what is needed. You you still need brilliantly talented and experienced people. Mm. You need those who know how the tools work, which tools are the best to suit the strategic problem or objective. You then need the right teams to execute, and you need the right delivery to influence at the board level. So, um, so I think in summary, what I'm netting out is in turbulent times, there's a greater need for expertise. There's a greater need for specialization. We just have to make possibly fewer decisions, fewer expenditures, but on the right things. Mm. Well, something that I've just been thinking over the last... Um, 24 hours is we've seen a lot in the world with environmental sustainability mm. and I think the insights world could almost learn a little bit from that um, having market research sustainability so reusing um, re recycling I guess market research data like digging into it more than once so not having it just be single use um, if at all possible because there are often data sets which remain relevant for some time after um, the project's finished. So I guess there's still some some value left in the, uh, on the table, I guess what I'm saying. Yeah, that's a great point. And on the client side, Insiders, we normally do leverage data sets multiple times over. So, so things do get recycled, they really get harnessed and leveraged. And um, we tend to ensure that before we uh, commission new projects that we've drained every drop of information from the preceding data set. So if we're not doing that, we're not doing our job right. <laughs> <laughs> Too true. <laughs> okay, so what does this all change for organizations? What can they be doing to help them lead their people from a strategic perspective? I think communication is key and making teams part of the bigger strategic issues. So rather than, you know, just getting on from day to day, pretending in life is as normal, it's actually address the issues, you know, say, look, this is a tough problem. You know, we're, we're losing sales, we're losing volume, we need innovation, but we're doing it on a shoestring. I think by being honest and by um, embracing the whole team and making them part of the problem, it, it creates a greater power to find the solution. So, you know, more transparency mm. rather than trying to, to do everything with little. No, true. And um, I guess once the, um, that strand, strate sound strategic uh, platform is in place, are there any additional ways that market research or insight has, can help translate that into tactical programs? Uh, my view has always been, and I think it's even more so today, that that um, market research needs to be more vocal, you know, MRX and Insight. We need to be more vocal. We need to challenge the agendas. We need to use that knowledge we have from the data and the information we have to say, look, guys, this isn't working. This is working. Let's try this. We need to raise our head above the parapet. And sometimes it's uncomfortable because we're normally very supportive and collaborative, but sometimes we need to be a bit more directive as well. And I think if we if we are really doing our job and are on top of all of those uh, pieces of work, the macro trends, uh, we're aware of what's happening socioeconomically, then we have a voice and we need to use that voice to really make a difference. And what are some of those ways we can voice that? Um, any any insights into that? Well, not just waiting to, to, to speak at the back end of a debrief, but take the lead, you know, pre-align, write a report with your thoughts, disseminate the information that you're seeing from the data, stand proud, you know, and, and, and don't do it alone. You know, this is what I mean by partnership between the MRX agencies and, and the uh, insiders on the client side. Work together, work holistically to really mine all that work and come up with some really top strategic recommendations. Mm. And work across agencies. So uh, in a few of my roles, I've had all my agencies working together as an extended part of my team. 
and that produced some brilliant pieces of work that went down really well with the senior leadership because it was over and above what they expected but it also delivered great thinking and unearthed some really great avenues for exploration. Nice. Do you have any examples that you, you can share? Uh, don't necessarily need to name um, brands or um, agencies. Um, uh, yeah, this was in, uh, in a big uh, retail category. I can't go into further info yeah. for confidentiality reasons, but it was a great experience. And I think the agencies loved that opportunity to also present and be, be part of the str wider strategic team talking to the stakeholders. You know, there's great talent in our industry. There's mm -hmm. absolute great talent. And I think we need to just get more adept at pulling that power together and working as, you know, a big cohesive team. No, true. We, we do have some very good, I guess, tools at our, um, at our flex, which is great. Tools and people, brain power. That's right. Um, so lastly, um, many organisations um, are feeling the pinch at the moment. Belts are being tightened as the uncertainty continues. Um, but in New Zealand, we have at least started to see some of the long-term home loan rates um, start to drop, mm -hmm. which is, um, from a consumer perspective, quite um, uh, yeah, uh, good, I guess. Um, so considering the potential constraints uh, what are some of the low-hanging, um, easy wins that Insights teams uh, can make to help the organisation succeed? I think anticipate. So, for example, you just explained what's happening uh, economically in New Zealand. Here we've just had another significant in in increase in interest rates, which means mortgages are going up. Um, and we've got food inflation. I think it was 16.4 or 16.7% by Kantar in the last report that I looked at. So it's tough. So rather than wait for things to get more difficult, I think low hanging fruit is for us to come up with solutions, come up with great strategies on pricing, come up with great strategies on promotions, come up with new innovation where possible, leverage existing data and information. Don't just commission research because a new questions come up in the team. So, you know, really double check, have we got those answers already? And, and, you know, really be ahead of the game. Do, do reporting on the macroeconomic uh, situation. Pull all those strands together. Do some of the, the hard graph thinking for the team and, and show that you're putting it all together in a, in a kind of um, approach to look at, you know, what are, what are the opportunities for our categories and brands? Hmm. Yeah, no, um, I guess as well as you've mentioned, uh, be empathetic. So that's always um, a key. But um, as, as we like to say as well, like be curious and creative. There are some really, like, there's some great opportunities to, to innovate um, with, with what we have. So um, us as market researchers can definitely help um, to drive that. Absolutely. And curiosity is one of my favourite words. I, I like to think of myself as insanely curious. I, you know, I think most of us in the market research insight sector, we, we all are massively curious and like to keep learning new things and looking at new ways of doing things. But we need to translate that into tangibles for the team. You know, how, how, can, the, how can we use our curiosity to bring back information that helps create commercial growth? No, it's, it's a very good point. Um, so if I can wrap up what we've talked about today um, for Bronya, um, it's, we discussed how essential market research and insights um, teams are in turbulent or challenging times. Uh, we looked at how market research has changed and is changing to help us better understand our world, um, the need for us to be empathetic um, and mm -hmm. recapture some of that human element um, that is potentially missed on a lot of digital um, market research um, collections. Um, we touched on the different types of turbulence and how uh, various tools can help us through each type. Um, for Bronya discussed how market research can help organisations set sound strategic foundations, um, but also translate that through into tactical programmes as well um, through various ways. Um, and lastly, we covered off a few easy wins uh, that organisations can make to help them get through these times uh, with greater confidence. So I, I think that covers it for Bronnie. Any other final points you wanted to make? 
just one final thing have fun you know enjoy what we do life is tough at the moment and i think let's bring a little bit of happiness back into our teams and you know energize each other with a bit of joy in the working day no, that's right. That's an excellent point to close on. So uh, thank you very much for uh, the chat today, Fabronia. Thank you. And uh, thank you also for everyone else who listened in. Uh, we really appreciate you leaving a review um, on your podcast platform. Um, appreciate you sending this episode to a colleague or peer. Um, and if you did want to uh, get in contact with Fabronia, uh, you will be able to find her on LinkedIn as well. So thank you for listening to Now That's Significant. <laughs>